Today, we are going to look at a body viz brain builder about the small intestine and celiac disease. Celiac is a chronic autoimmune disorder. Most of the pathological effects of celiac occur within the small intestine. The small intestine is composed of three sections, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. The duodenum is the first and shortest part of the small intestine, being approximately 25 centimeters long. This section is also the widest and least movable part of the intestine. The jejunum and ileum have a combined length of approximately six to seven meters. The jejunum is found within the right and left upper quadrants of the abdominal cavity, and the ileum is within the right and left lower quadrants. The ileum ends at the junction of the cecum and the large intestine. There is no clear demarcation line that marks the junction between the jejunum and the ileum, but each segment has distinctive characteristics that are surgically important. Some of these include the color of each segment, the jejunum being a deeper red compared to the ileum's more pinkish color, the thickness of the segment's walls, the jejunal wall is thicker and heavier, the amount of fat within the supporting mesenteries, there is more fat associated with the ileum, and finally, the number of lymphoid nodules within the walls of the segments. The ileum has the most. Let's learn more about the histological features of the small intestine. The walls of the small intestine are composed of a series of layers, which are from superficial to deep, the mucosa, the muscularis mucosae, the submucosa, muscularis externa, and the serosa. The small intestines are lined with a series of mucosal folds lining the inner surface. These mucosal folds are termed the plicae circularis, increase the absorption area of the small intestine. The surface area of the mucosa is increased further by finger-like projections called villi, which cover the entire surface of the small intestine. The mucosa also possesses numerous depressions, called crypts, that open between the villi and extend through the mucosa into the muscularis mucosae. The epithelium of the mucosa is a simple columnar epithelium with scattered goblet cells. Each of these columnar cells possess even smaller finger-like projections, termed microvilli, that further increase the surface area of the small intestine. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease, resulting in a permanent intolerance to certain peptides within gluten. Gluten is a protein naturally found within wheat, barley, and rye. While there is no known cure for celiac disease, symptoms are minimized by a lifelong gluten-free diet. Certain molecules within the interstitial epithelium bind to peptides and present them to T-cells of the immune system. If these peptides are pathogen-derived, the T-cells initiate an immune response. In celiac disease, the immune system is misguided and inappropriately responds to the gluten peptides, causing inflammation within the small intestine. This reduces the height and number of interstitial villi thereby reducing the surface area and the ability to absorb nutrients. The long-term prognosis of a patient with celiac disease varies. With proper treatment and long-term medical follow-ups, the prognosis is often excellent. Left untreated, patients often suffer severe complications, and in rare instances, celiac can be fatal. Next, we will look at the symptoms, causes, and treatments for celiac disease and finally, give a patient example. Celiac disease induces various symptoms, including chronic diarrhea, fatigue, anemia, typically with an iron deficiency, loss of bone density, joint pain, and reduced splenic function. Precise causes of celiac disease are unknown. However, your genes, combined with eating foods with gluten and other factors, can contribute to celiac disease infant feeding practices, gastrointestinal infections, and gut bacteria might contribute to having celiac disease. The only treatment to manage celiac disease is a strict lifelong gluten-free diet. Even trace amounts of gluten in a diet can be damaging, even if they do not cause signs or symptoms. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 20. Gender, female. Chief complaints, joint stiffness, muscle pain on her back, diarrhea, 
and fatigue. Your patient also has normal vital signs. You step into your patient's room for an examination. Your patient explains how she's been feeling nauseous with diarrhea and intestinal cramping for the past couple of days. She is a college tennis player and has been on the road for the past couple of weeks traveling to tournaments when she began feeling unwell. You ask your patient about any allergies or intolerances she has. She says she has a lactose intolerance that she can control by avoiding milk products. And when she was younger, her doctor suspected the possibility of celiac disease, so she maintained a very controlled diet with minimal gluten. However, since being in college, with the stress of being an athlete and on the road, she's had a more regular diet with gluten. You order blood test and a jejunal mucosal biopsy, which confirm the diagnosis of celiac disease. You talk with your patient about consulting with a dietitian and maintaining a strict gluten-free diet. Your patient agrees and feels better with all symptoms reciting. This is a classic example of celiac disease. Want to see more 3D anatomy? Check out BodyVis 3D dissection software used to make this video and patient case study from a real patient's MRI and CT scan. Click the link on our page to learn more.